You're watching the KOM Morning News on Fox 14. Right now at 7, back to school also means back to sports for at least some kids. Tanya Bach shares some tips on how to keep your kids safe this fall. And KOM's Melissa Alexis shows us how a grant will help students in Oklahoma. And we've got another below normal start for the day. A few clouds out there, clearing skies later. Another below normal day as well in store. We'll have a look at that forecast get you out the door coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOM Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Chris Warner just after 7 a.m. on this Wednesday morning, August the 21st. Can you believe it? I know it's a Jimmy Kimmel kind of thing, but can you really believe it though? We're almost to the end of August here. The kids back in school and for many families back to school means back to fall sports. And as a parent, you always want to keep your kids safe, but what happens if your child is a student athlete? Well, KOM Stanya Bach introduces us to a young football player who is ready to get back on the field after a broken bone sidelined him last fall. Yeah, you, know, you just gotta have fun. The fun is just beginning for Hayden Murray as the fall football season gets underway. He's ready for football. He's excited. It's his favorite sport, so he's ready to go far. Hayden's mother, Ashley, says she's excited to see her 11-year-old don a Purple Dragon jersey again this year and hopes it's an accident-free season, unlike last year. I was just running and then I kind of like twisted my ankle and then I we checked it and it, it was like fractured and, it's, and it was sprained a few times too. It was scary because I've never really, he was kind of, he was one of my first kids with a broken bone. While Hayden's broken bone only benched him for a couple of weeks, injuries like his are a constant concern for coaches. Even as a league, we have, we have plenty of kids, but at the same point, we're not going to, we're all about giving them a chance to play mm -hmm. and having fun. We want kids to come back and play in purple. And if we have a lot of injuries, I don't think a lot of people would come back. The Junior Dragons Youth League puts a big focus on hydration and teaches kids proper tackling techniques to prevent concussions. But as in any sport, injuries can always happen. Allison Reed is the manager of sports medicine for Mercy Joplin in Southeast Kansas communities. Her best advice for any athlete is to properly stretch and condition. They get in the weight room and work out with the team and the coaches uh, and Flexibility is a big one, flexibility and mobility. So making sure they're ready for practices and games um, is a big one to prevent injuries, making sure they're strong enough. Reed says it's also important to communicate with your team's trainer and coach. Luckily, I don't think we've had a concussion in our league in the last four years, but um, I think just recognizing the symptoms, getting everybody on the same page from the parents to the coaches. A network that's all on the same team. What are your goals for the season this year? Just try harder, have fun, and do what I can do the best. The best is yet to come. Reporting in Pittsburgh, Kansas, Tanya Bach, KOAM News. Now, Reed stresses the importance of student athletes checking in with their school's athletic trainer as they are the first line of support. And I've had some pretty decent weather. If you've been practicing some sports here this past week, it's not been too bad, especially after last week's hot temperatures. And we've got another pretty decent start to the day now. Let's start with a look outside from our camera on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. We do have some extra clouds rolling in, but these will not last very long for most of us. But you can see even from our camera at 7th and range line, just a little bit of a cloud shield out there as we get the day underway. Modoc camera 20th and range line showing those clouds as well, also showing traffic in a state of motion, which is always a good thing. As we head into the afternoon, I think the best chances for actual like any clouds you'll really truly notice will be in our far western counties, Parsons, Chanute, Coffeyville, Fredonia, Yates Center. We're looking at some partly cloudy skies out there. I think it's painting a few too many clouds, but nonetheless, outside of that though, we are looking at mostly clear to just clear skies and another day of temperatures below normal across the area, and that's where we are now. See, it's 62 in Joplin, 63 in Pittsburgh, and across the region, those temperatures are relatively pleasant. So now Stockton taking the place as the cool spot, taking that from Monette now down to 60. All of us, though, low to mid 60s, so a very nice start to the day. And we're going to have another pleasant day. Most of us, again, sunny skies out there, and we've got temperatures going back into the mid 80s. So again, below normal, not significantly so, but hey. 
below normal is still better than above normal. Unfortunately, these cooler temperatures, or at least below normal temperatures, will not last. We'll have the details on when the summer heat returns in your full forecast, and that's coming up here in just a few more minutes. In this morning's top stories, the city of Goodman is now on its third mayor and third police chief in the past year and a half. The town's police chief, Samuel Townsend, resigned from his position following a failed bid to become the McDonald County Sheriff. Townsend took over as chief last year after the town's entire police force resigned following the election of Mayor John Bunch, who resigned from his position in February. And uh, they come in, you know, kind of like with the blue flame, and they come in really ambitious and work hard. And uh, I don't want to just leave, uh, leave Goodman high and dry or anything of that nature and leave times for, you know, all the hard work we've done of cleaning up the community to go in the toilet. Um, so it was very good uh, to be able to make contact with him several months ago, be able to train him for my position, so it'd be a smooth turnover, and he would know everything he needed just right off the bat, and so it'd be a smooth transition um, of protecting and serving the community. Current Mayor Clay Saxon and the rest of the city officials promoted Assistant Police Chief Michael Akins to the position of chief. Akins released a statement, which you can read on KOAMnewsnow.com. Also with Akins comes the city's first canine officer, Rocco, who is a five-year-old Belgian Malinua. Bass Pro announces more layoffs in their marine division, as well as manufacturing plants in Miami, Oklahoma, Lebanon, and Bolivar, Missouri. According to the company, the latter two plants in the Ozarks laid off 10% or about 100 workers. Bass Pro cited the, quote, current economic environment and slowing consumer demand as reasons for the layoffs. The Peoria tribe in Miami has received a grant of more than $100,000 to increase access to healthy foods for students in their early childhood program. KOM's Melissa Alexis has more on how the grant helps. This upgrade is really exciting because, of course, being a mom of a toddler, they are all about their snacks. Christina Spriggs is a mom of one who looks forward to her child having more healthy food options at Woodland Academy because the grant money will allow for kitchen expansion and reconstruction. I keep my daughter's diet as clean as I can, um, but with the options that we have here locally, it can be really hard to do that sometimes, um, especially certain times of the year, unless you grow it yourself at home and know what you're putting in it directly. The grant will help the Early Childhood Center do just that. The new garden will allow them to grow organic food and they'll be able to buy produce from local sources. The director of Early Childhood, JoLynn Kaiser, says this is beneficial for the health of the children. Ongoing pesticides are not healthy for children. Um, it's just really difficult to do with huge farms. And so by being able to buy from local farmers, we can avoid all of that and hopefully improve the health outcomes of the children that consume the food here. Not only is the garden beneficial health-wise, but it will also be educational for the kids to learn about the process of gardening and disconnect from screens. Watch the produce begin to form and grow and change color. If things like forgetting to water your garden bed, what happens whenever you don't water your plants? They die, but that's a learning opportunity for them as well. Having the outdoor gardens that the children will be able to have a hand in cultivating their own food, um, I'm really excited about that. Kids need to be outside. My toddler definitely needs to be outside. She needs to run, put her feet in some dirt and grass. Peoria Chief Craig Harper says he's proud of the Peoria Tribe's commitment to meet the nutritional needs of the community. Reporting in Miami, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. The Woodland Academy serves between 60 and 100 meals a day, and this grant will help them do that. And those are our top news stories this half hour. Coming up next, Greg Morse from Stronghold Data will be in the studio this morning, sharing the importance of keeping your data secure. But first, got another live look from the campus of Missouri Southern ahead of Community Day. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Keeping your data secure is important more now than it ever has been. Greg Morse from Strong Stronghold Data is with us this morning with an invitation for an upcoming lunch and learn presentation. So welcome to the show. Uh, we were just discussing, you know, cybersecurity is something that people have been aware of, but it seems in the last couple of years it's really come to the forefront. And so you guys are trying to help out with that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it, 
it's huge. Every company needs it. And so these lunch and learns, we hold them every quarter now. And uh, our goal is to just have an opportunity for people to uh, come enjoy some food. We're having Chick-fil-A tomorrow at this one and uh, learn about, hear from experts in different topics. And this, this time we're talking about cybersecurity. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to see how, how it goes. Um, we're gonna be having experts from two companies called Cyber74 and SonicWall coming in. And they're gonna be talking about different things like security risk assessments, um, their annual cybersecurity report, things business owners really need to know about how to improve their uh, organization's security. And so yeah, it's gonna be a really good time. And, and you know, it, it's one of those things too, a lot of folks, we hear about the big data mm -hmm. breaches. We hear about those hacks and things that happen, but it can happen even to the mom and pop shop as well. Oh, 100%. And you know, that's why we have these uh, special community training events uh, is to invite business leaders of all sizes to come together and just learn, find out what they didn't know and um, uh, understand what they can do to improve the cybersecurity of their organization. So um, yeah, everybody, every business leader, or organizational leader is invited uh, to our uh, lunch and learn. It's a, gonna be a stronghold data tomorrow um, from 11 to 1.30. And um, if you're, you can sign up at strongholdll.eventbrite.com. And uh, again, we're having Chick-fil-A, so I mean, that. <laughs> Yeah. That should be a good enough reason right. to come, right? You know, so um, but yeah, completely free, and we like I said, we'd love to have every business and organization leader come. And you know, in this day and age too, how important is it for businesses and organizations to have good cybersecurity in place? Because it seems like they're taking more data than mm -hmm. they used to. Oh man, it's so important. Um, you know, bad actors are constantly trying to get in and steal that data, as you mentioned, um, and then they hold it for ransom, and this can cost cost organizations and businesses a lot of money. And so um, that's why it's so important to be able to secure that and secure your business. And these uh, lunch and learns are opportunities to come here from the experts on how you can do that. And something that's essential too. You want to make sure you're hearing from the experts. You don't want to ask your neighbor or you know yes. the guy down the road. It's it's better to get this information from professionals who know what they're looking at and what they're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And that's why we bring in the the best experts in the industry. So as I mentioned, uh, SonicWall and Cyber74 two giants in the industry, cybersecurity industry, are going to be here tomorrow um, talking about everything you need to know about protecting your business or organization. Excellent, Greg. Thank you so much. And of course, if you'd like to sign up, as he mentioned, you can go to strongholdll.eventbrite.com. And of course, check them out online. And we'll have this information on our website a little later as well. We'll have another look at your forecast when we come back. And welcome back to the KOAM Morning News. And now 717 on this Wednesday, August the 21st. And we have got some clouds out there. We talked about some of the computer model data we look at. And I told you, you know, like last week, some of that short-term data was, was inaccurate. We were getting storms that weren't showing up. So I haven't really trusted it that much lately. Didn't trust it so much this morning, but it was indicating that we'd see a few extra clouds. And I said, no, no, this this has been wrong. I'm going to go with this other information. It turns out this time it was right. We got mostly cloudy skies across parts of the area, so you, you never know. There's so many points of data to look at, and sometimes you lose faith in one, and all of a sudden it starts uh, backing you up again. But we do have mostly cloudy skies out there. MoDOT camera 20th and range line showing us that, and even though this KDOT camera is not pointed at the sky, you don't see any sunlight out there because mostly cloudy skies out there south of Pittsburgh. So we are still looking at that possibility of some partly to mostly cloudy skies in our far western counties. The majority of us, though, should see these clouds begin to clear out as we go through the morning and we'll have otherwise mostly sunny skies that east breeze 5 to 10, but some gusts of 15 or 20 will still be possible and our temperatures today and tonight will still be below normal and for most of us even on our Thursday, they'll be below normal stray shower too possible in the morning Thursday. The overall chance is though less than 10 percent and then we'll have a partly cloudy day Thursday. Now we're going to be a little warmer tomorrow as well. Some of us may actually reach those average highs of about 90 degrees, but for the most part, we're going to look at the upper 80s. And then as we head into Friday and the upcoming weekend, that's when temperatures really start to heat back up. We're looking at or just slightly above average for our highs on Friday. And then this weekend and next week, it starts to get a little uncomfortable again. There's another look at some of those clouds from our camera 7th and range line in Joplin right now. It is 62 with an east breeze at about three temperatures this morning. It's another cool by August standard start. We're all into the low to mid 60s. Stockton now the cool spot at 60.
As we head through the morning, again, we're expecting these clouds to clear on out of here by about 8, 9 o'clock. So there's a few lingering clouds for most of us. We'll go upper 70s by 11 a.m. Our highs today, again, below normal, not significantly so, but still below normal. Mid 80s with those sunny skies and uh, again, the wind east 5 to 10 with some occasional gusts out there. Now, clear skies through the evening down the low 70s by 10 and we'll go mostly clear overnight with clouds gradually increasing after midnight ahead of Thursday's partly cloudy day. We we'll back down into the low 60s average low by the way 69 mid to upper 80s on Thursday low 90s on Friday. So we're starting to heat up. Then we head into the weekend and take a look. We see mid 90s and so now we're going back above normal as we head into this weekend and in the next week and we do have a system Thursday that could bring our temperatures back down below normal, which would be nice. But ahead of that, we've got those mid 90s to watch out for. So the other side of that, though, is those occasional pop up storm chances as well. The pop up storms, you know, feed off the daytime heating and some of the extra moisture in the air. So that means humidity levels may go up. We could see heat index values close to 100 again next week. So if you got plans this weekend, schools with outdoor activities, just something to keep in mind. It may get back to those uncomfortably hot levels next week. Let's check your forecast. We're back with more right after this. Welcome back. If you're looking for some fun and happen to be a fan of bingo, who isn't by the way, <laughs> all you need to do is head on over to the Roxy Events Center downtown Joplin for Nacho Mama's Bingo. I already like the title of this. <laughs> Michelle Keen and Tina Sis join us in the studio to show or to share rather how this game is also benefiting the Alzheimer's Association. So ladies, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. So tell me a little bit about, I just love saying this, Nacho Mama's Bingo. <laughs> Well, it is definitely not traditional bingo. So if you are somebody who's shushing everyone in the room while you're playing bingo, probably not the best place to come for the night. But if you're up for a fun, just thrilling night of maybe losing your card, listening to some great <laughs> 70s music, dress up. We're here to have a good time. But in the, the whole purpose of this is to raise money for Alzheimer's. Excellent, excellent. So um, tell me a little bit about uh, the, the whole premise on the bingo. What exactly got this set up? How is this, what is this going to do for folks? This is to help raise money towards our Walk to End Alzheimer's, which is on um, September 14th, which we hope to see everybody out there. Um, we're just trying to raise money and awareness. This, the money that we raise will help us get um, things into the community that we need more resources more um, materials for the educators in the community and for our um, facilitators that do the support the, the groups, support groups. And things, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the support groups and things like that so we're mm -hmm. just trying to get the information out there because it's it's extremely important for us to do as much as we can for alzheimer's yes. because it's one in five women that are diagnosed with alzheimer's and one in five men now that's a lot of that's a lot and we don't, we want to eradicate all of that and get to the end of this and get that white flower and how important are the, you know, having these resources for you all to be able to accomplish this mission? Oh, it's huge. Um, in our community, um, Tina and I both work for agencies that help seniors stay home, and we witness every day um, caregiver burnout, where there's just people out there that are caring for their loved one, and they um, need assistance. They need help. And then there's people living with the disease that actually we need to find a cure. We need to find even something that will help them with the symptoms and to, to help slow the progression of this disease. And that's what this walk will help us do, yes. is help fund those things and begin to see better progress in this. And we're here to see that first survivor. So I will survive is a theme of this. So you yes. kind of get that. That's why we chose this theme is because we want to see that first survivor. All right, and one more time, where is this at? What do people need to know if they want to go? They can um, go to the Roxy, 102 South Main. Main. Jo no, Joplin. <laughs> Joplin. 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 <laughs> we overthought that one. We did. Early. We yes. were saying that earlier. Yeah. And um, you can go to our Facebook page, which is um, Joplin Area Walk to End Alzheimer's. And you, there's a QR code there. You can purchase tickets from there, or you can call me and get tickets. And my number is on the Joplin Walk page. Yeah. So, and it's this Saturday this night, Saturday by the way. Night. Okay. Um, doors open yes. at 5.30. We're going to look forward to seeing everyone um, wear your favorite um, outfit to look in 70s. It's not just going to be a costume contest. Right. We're going to have a 
walkway so they can really show off their stuff. That's and right. the old 70s and um, when they used to do the dance when you'd stand on yeah. each side and dance through. We're going to have some really good times at this event. All yeah. right. Well, yes. Michelle Tina, thank you both so much for coming in. And of course, if you missed any of it, don't worry. It's going to be on our website as well, koamnewsnow.com. we got more news and weather headed your way right after this. The four states most watched news starts now. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News on Fox 14. It's currently 7.30 on this Wednesday, August the 21st. I'm Chris Warner. Thank you so much for sticking with us. The city of Joplin has announced a new program for new homeowners. The Joplin Homeowner Rehabilitation Program 2, or JHRP 2, will act as part of the city's community revitalization efforts. The program offers qualifying homeowners up to $25,000 for critical home repairs, including roof and siding replacements, HVAC upgrades, and more. Find more out or find out more rather about available locations and to see if you qualify, just head over to our website, koamnewsnow.com. Joplin Police Department introduced two new officers to its force, two new K-9 officers. K-9 Max is an 18-month-old German Shepherd. Officer Ron Donahue is his handler. And K-9 Bolt is a 16-month-old Belgian Malinua. This is Officer Adam Brannon's third K-9 over his Joplin Police career. He stresses the importance of these dogs as they assist in patrolling. We need these dogs on the streets in Joplin. Um, they're used a lot for narcotic searches, um, tracking of persons, um, and all building searches for persons if, you know, the, the call comes that way. Captain Will Davis says the addition of these two new dogs on the force, with, the, with this addition rather, they are back to full canine staff. While most students in the area went back to school Monday, students in Joplin returned to class yesterday. As a look from Soaring Heights Elementary, as kids arrived yesterday morning, teachers and staff welcomed students back with open arms. Also there to greet them, members of the KOAM team and the Joplin Police Department. Oh, we are so thrilled that the first day of school is finally here. We've been patiently waiting for weeks, preparing our building um, for our students, and they're finally going to be here, and that's what makes it all worth it. Administrators tells 420 students are currently enrolled at Soaring Heights. They expect that number to increase to about 450 by the end of the year. A Pitt State hosted a community fair yesterday afternoon where local businesses and organizations got the opportunity to showcase their services and connect with college students. The fair gave students a chance to make and build relationships. I am here looking for um, either like intern positions or like just a lot of um, social networking and I'm here to make friends. I'm also here to meet a lot of people from Pitt, Pittsburgh. Students also had the chance to get free food and play games at the event. Organizations including local churches, Pizza Hut, military recruitment operations, and many more were all in attendance. Now we're going to take a quick look at that forecast, starting with the future track. And we're looking at uh, the possibility of some partly cloudy to maybe even mostly cloudy skies in our western counties as we head through today. But as you can see, there's also almost a barrier these clouds run into. They don't really move much. The rest of us, though, looking to be mostly clear to just plain clear. And our temperatures today will once again be below normal. We'll have that east wind at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Occasional gusts as we've seen the last couple of days, upwards of 15, perhaps 20 miles an hour. A pretty chilly start for August out there. 62 in Joplin, 63 in Pittsburgh, mostly cloudy in both locations. Temperatures this morning, not bad for August the 21st. We've got low to mid 60s across the area. Monette has taken back the cool spot at 60 degrees this morning. As we head into the afternoon, we are looking at the majority of us having mostly clear to sunny skies. Our temperatures once again below average, not significantly so, but still it's not 90 degrees yet as we hang out in the mid 80s across the area today. So pretty decent day. However, the nice weather will eventually come to an end and the summer heat will make a return. We'll talk about those details in the full forecast and that will happen here in just a few more minutes. Had to look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. A 12 year old Texas boy has his sights set on a world record all while battling cancer. Before we head to break, here's another live look of Missouri Southern's campus ahead of their community day. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News. So we've got some adorable, oh, hello. 
we have some adorable little friends with us this morning and we have these two nice ladies who have joined this pop prints on the heartland have been known as a location where you can take your four-legged family members to be spayed or neutered and joining us this morning gracie stover and gina ward to share some exciting new information on a new program you all have started welcome to the show so what have you guys got going on out there well we're working on adoption now and this gracie handles the adoption process um, we're at a new location 610 north, north joplin, joplin street yes and we're open monday through friday there um, we do the spay and neuter on tuesdays and thursdays which one is this cricket this is cricket and this is roly-poly um, Roly Poly certainly is Roly Poly. Yes, yes. He lives up to his name. Um, we all have adoptable kittens. Um, we are open from 10 to 2 on Monday through Friday for adoptions. We have um, all of our kitties are mainly foster based, but we have cats at um, Pet Sense, the Literacy Cat, and Claws and Paws in Pittsburgh. Okay, and so you guys are calling this the the catio, if I understand correctly. Yes, our adoption room is our catio. Um, we have plenty of cats. We have adoptable cats of all ages, sizes, um, basically everything. <laughs> so, how important is it for you all to be start to be able to offer some of these new services and have that expanded facility? Well, in Pittsburgh, um, we have adopted out around 314 cats from when we started last April, I believe. Um, there are still <laughs> a ton more that are without homes and definitely need homes. Well, and look at how adorable they are. Who oh, would yes, not want yes. to have these little playful yeah. guys? See, he, she's just uh, not gnawing on my finger yeah. here. <laughs> so um, if folks do want to adopt, where can they go? What do they need to know? Um, basically, um, Monday through Friday, we will do it at Paw Prints from 10 to 2. Um, then any time during the week, usually whenever they're open, the bookstore, the uh, literacy cat, um, Claws and Paws and Pet Sense will all have kittens and cats for adoption at any point of the day. Excellent, excellent. And of course, uh, these are just two of the many oh, yeah. adorable little kitties that are looking for a home. So make sure you check them out. And if you missed any of that, of course, don't forget, it's going to be on our website here soon at koamnewsnow.com. You can also visit their website at pawprintsontheheartland.neocities.org. We're going to have another look at your forecast <laughs> as well as Consumer Watch when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News. It is now 6, 641. It is not. It is 741 on this Wednesday morning. And so we talked about, you know, we had some clouds roll into the area this morning. We've had some mostly cloudy skies, but we are already beginning to see that clearing from our camera at 7th and range line. Modoc camera 20th and range line. Still get those clouds socked in. It's a little harder to see here, but that clearing is taking place. And still mostly cloudy over in Kansas as well. KDOT camera 69 in Kansas crossing. Uh, still no big sunlight getting through yet, but these clouds are expected for most of us to continue to clear as we go through the morning. Uh, however, model data suggests that we could still have some partly to mostly cloudy skies and parts of southeastern Kansas as we go through the day. We'll also have that east breeze at about 5 to 10 miles an hour with some occasional gusts 15, maybe 20 like we've seen the last couple of days. Winds will begin to shift out of the southeast as we go into the overnight hours. We could see a couple of isolated showers in the morning hours tomorrow. Uh, it's a less than 10% chance at this point, but it you saw on the future track a couple of showers possible. Well, partly cloudy skies on our Thursday, and we're going to be a little warmer. Most of us still below normal or right at normal. But then as we head into our Friday, even though we'll have a below normal start for the day, we'll have a mostly clear skies, ample sunshine, and that that wind continues to shift further out of the south and southeast, it's going to bring in much warmer weather. We're going to be at or just above normal for our Friday ahead of some hotter temperatures heading into the weekend. 62 in Joplin right now. East breeze is at three miles an hour. Temperatures this morning pleasant for August at this point. We're in the low to mid 60s. Again, Monette has taken back the cool spot king or crown 
at 60. Clear skies for most of us through the morning. These clouds again slowly clearing out, so we'll have those partly mostly cloudy and eventually mostly clear skies. Upper 70s by 11 o'clock. Heading into the afternoon, highs again below average, not significantly below average, but still below average. So we go right around the mid 80s with sunny skies for the majority of us. Then we'll see those clouds after midnight begin to gradually increase a bit. Clear skies through the evening, low 70s by 10. Overnight lows, another chilly one again for August, back into the low 60s. And it's interesting how the seasons work because right now the 60s are chilly. In a few more months, the 60s will be warm. It's interesting. I just I love how the weather works. All right, so we start heating up into the weekend. We start going mid 90s out there. We also have pop up storm chances as well. And the issue with the pop up storm chances is that we could see increased dew point and humidity levels because they feed off the daytime heating and that extra moisture. And so we are looking at the potential of seeing heat index values climbing back up close to 100 uh, this weekend and into next week, at least the first half of next week. So if you got plans this weekend, schools with outdoor activities, recess, you just want to keep in mind we're going to want to keep an eye on those heat index values out there. Looking at the possibility of another system bringing a few more pop up storms Thursday and Friday, but also kicking our temperatures back well below normal into the low to mid 80s. That's check your forecast. Now we're going to take a look at what's happening in Consumer Watch and in Consumer Watch this morning. A majority of Americans say inflation is hurting their purchasing power. That's according to a study from financial services company Empower. 62% of Americans say their purchasing power is decreasing because of persistent inflation and 79% say serving sizes are smaller for many foods like cereal and chips. As for beverages, more than a third of Americans are not willing to pay a dollar more for a cup of coffee. A federal judge blocks a rule on non-compete clauses. A Texas judge says the FTC cannot ban non-compete agreements because the agency lacks authority to implement the rule. The rule would have banned employers from using non-compete agreements to prevent their workers from taking jobs at rival firms. The ban was set to go into effect next month. Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris's economic plan includes fixing prices on food and groceries. But as Fox's Kelly Saberi reports from Chicago, mom and pop stores say the plan will have a negative effect. Local grocers, specifically mom and pop shops like Happy Foods here in Chicago, have a unique look at what the economy really looks like because they're talking to their customers day in and day out. Happy Foods owner Barb Eastman tells me she's not quite sure Harris's plan will work. As a grocery store, that's how you adjust. It's the supply chain. So we have a lot of beef that comes in that's, you know, we can grind. Our grinds go down, you know, in price. Or if we get good deals on bacon, the bacon's going to go down. So, I mean, we adjust all the time. And it, you can't have price fixed because then you can't adjust. Profit margins in the grocery industry are already at their lowest level since 2019, hitting 1.6%. Fixing prices could lead to even tighter margins, forcing some stores to close entirely or to cut costs by potentially firing employees. It's a lose-lose for both local grocers like Eastman and for consumers because by decreasing competition, you'd inadvertently increase prices. Eastman also points to the myriad of other reasons that factor into higher prices. This includes transportation and shipping costs. Plus, there's the unpredictability of farming. This includes weather events and disease outbreaks like avian flu. Eastman says this is one of the reasons why egg prices are currently higher in her store. In Chicago, Kelly Saberi, Fox Business. That's a look at some of our top consumer stories. Now we're going to take a look at the market prices before the opening bell. A 12 year old who's battling cancer is on a quest to set a world record. Last week, he stopped by Grambling State University to further his mission. Devontae Martin has the story. Hold up, I know you ain't copying my boots. Oh, yeah, gotta have the 5'11s, bro. On the surface, Devarja Daniel of Houston, Texas, comes across as a normal kid, but at 12 years old, he is already a part of 844 law enforcement agencies. DJ is currently battling brain and spinal cancer but that has not stopped him from chasing his goal of being sworn into 1,000 police agencies to break the world record. Friday, he added to his total as he was sworn in as police chief at Gramlin State for the day. DJ says he is enjoying the chase for the record. It's pretty fun going to all these places 
and then all these extra hours, I'm gonna be honest, I'll be trying my best to stay up with my dad, but then five minutes later, I'm knocked out. His father, Theodis Daniel, says the pursuit for 1,000 police agencies has been therapy for his son. I didn't bring the letter, but I have a letter uh, from Texas Children, and, and one part it says that these law enforcement and law enforcement ceremonies have been proven beneficial to this critically ill child. So even medical saying is, is helping him, so they use it as a form of treatment for him now. Gramlin State's police chief, Rod Demery, called DJ an inspiration and that he sees him as a future police officer. It's a divine calling, and I think it's natural for him to be where he is. And him coming in here, seeing the, the joy and, and, and the way he just falls into place, that's what he is. Before departing for their next stop, DJ left one message for the community. I'm going to keep on going until my gas tank run out. And obviously that means when God calls you home, you never know when God's going to call you home. It's an impressive story, an impressive young man, and maybe he can go beyond 1,000 law enforcement agencies. Well, we've got ourselves another below normal day across the area, so that's still a good thing. Quick look outside from the Modoc camera, 20th and range line in Joplin. You can see we're starting to get a little more sunshine. We had some mostly cloudy skies there for a moment, but those are beginning to clear on out. Not seeing the sunshine yet in Pittsburgh, but we will eventually as the morning progresses. Of course, actually, see the shadow? It's a little hard to see sometimes, but I just noted the shadow. So we are getting a little more sunlight here at 69 in Kansas crossing south of Pittsburgh. Our western counties could still be partly cloudy as we go through the day. The majority of us are looking to be mostly clear to just straight up clear with our temperatures today remaining below normal and we will remain below normal tonight. But after midnight, we'll start to see some clouds increasing out west. Could see a brief opportunity for an isolated shower or two, uh, really a less than 10% chance. And then we're going to spend Thursday a little warmer at or just slightly below average with partly cloudy skies. And then as we head into Friday, skies begin to clear out ample sunshine. The winds really pick up out of the south southeast, and that's going to put our temperatures at or slightly above normal as we head into Friday. Temperatures this morning, though, pretty darn good out there. 62 in Joplin, east breeze at three. Around the area, we're still all in the low to mid 60s, with Monette as the cool spot at 60. And through the morning hours, again, we'll start to see those skies clear out for most of us and going into the upper 70s by late morning. We'll have another look at your forecast and news you need to know right after this. Here's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Bass Pro announces more layoffs in their marine division, as well as at manufacturing plants in Miami, Oklahoma, and Lebanon and Bolivar, Missouri. According to the company, the latter two plants in the Ozarks laid off 10% or about 100 workers. Bass Pro cited the, quote, current economic environment and slowing consumer demand as reasons for the layoffs. City of Goodman is now on its third police chief in the past year and a half. Samuel Townsend resigned from his position following a failed bid to become the McDonald County Sheriff. City officials promoted Assistant Police Chief Michael Akins to the position of chief. And the city of Joplin announces a new program for new homeowners. The Joplin Homeowner Rehabilitation Program 2 will act as part of the, of the city's community revitalization efforts. The program offers qualifying homeowners up to $25,000 for critical home repairs. Find out more about available locations and to see if you qualify, you can head over to our website at koamnewsnow.com. And today, another below average day out there. As we go into the mid 80s, most of us sunny skies, some partly cloudy skies possible in our further west counties. We'll have clear skies through the evening, low 70s by 10. Clouds increasing gradually after midnight. We'll fall back into the low 60s. Temperatures begin to increase as well as we head into the weekend. Upper 80s to near normal tomorrow, around 90. Then we'll be at or slightly above average on Friday. Mid 90s heading into next week. Some pop up storm chances as well, and that could lead to increased dew points in humidity levels. So we could see heat index values approaching 100 as we head into the weekend and next week. So if you've got plans this weekend or again for schools with outdoor activities or recess, just want to keep an eye on those heat index values as we head into the next week. Well, August supermoon blue moon, the first of 2024's four consecutive supermoons that will appear this year kicked off this week. The blue moon began on Sunday and will end today. The event gave astronomy fans a rare show when they looked to the skies. The full moon reached its peak on Monday. The old farmer's almanac details specific moonrise times for different zip codes across the U.S. And certainly uh, really neat to see the full moon and 
noticing that yesterday morning. Uh, just keeping an eye on it. Just so clear, so cool looking. Well, thank you all so much for letting us put the good in your morning. We'll be back with more news and weather today at noon. Until then, have a great rest of your day.